Hello everyone, it's Allie from Titan and welcome back to our channel. I am here with our first of two personal breaks this evening and we're going to be checking out our last hobby box here of 2021 Topps WWE Flagship for Joseph B from New York. So thank you so much Joseph for letting me open up this box of WWE for you here on the channel and I hope to find you some awesome cards to add to your collection. Now, I will say I'm curious if the other remaining Topps WWE products will actually be able to release in time. Currently Women's Division and Finest are showing for March 30th on the calendar but of course later this year I think even in April we're going to be seeing WWE products from Panini so I'm not sure. Topps doesn't really have much time left to get those products out. So now we just have to wait. See if we'll be getting any more WWE Tops releases ever again. But anyways, very excited to get into this flagship box. Flagship has been very kind to us here on the channel. Dual autograph, plate auto, low numbered autographs, really cool wrestlers, really cool base parallels. So hopefully we end off on a high note here for Joseph. So let's just go ahead and see what this box has in store for us by snapping us into the corner and let's get started. So very excited to check this on out. Two hits per box. In the past, we found one autograph and then an additional hit, which is, I believe, expected. Now, a couple times we've found film cell relics. Usually we are finding a matte relic, but very excited and curious to see what we're going to end off with here. We've seen super cool names come out of this product. A couple Shinsuke Nakamura autographs, Finn Balor. We also have had Becky Lynch. Dual autograph number 10. I don't remember the wrestlers on that one, but I remember a dual autograph. So we've seen a lot of really cool stuff here out of flagship. I wasn't sure what to expect when this product first arrived, but I was very, very pleased with it. And I'm sad to see it go. So, like I said, let's just try and end off on a high note here for Joseph. We are starting off with a Aqua Parallel here, 200 out of 299. Bobby Lashley defeats Humberto Carrillo here in a no disqualification match. Card number 70. So our first numbered card of the box, we found anywhere between two and four numbered cards per box in the past. So hopefully we're on the higher end of that today. We'll say I really enjoy the color scheme used on the base cards. The green and purple is not normally a mix that I think I would enjoy, but I like the way it actually turned out. It's like you hear green and purple, it's like it's an interesting combo, but I really like the way it looks. So overall, I think flagship was a really nice product. We do have light green here, 127 out of 199. The Straight Profits defeat Shane Thorne and Brendan Vink. That is card number 41. Second numbered card of the box already. We've had a lot of fun with WWE products here on the channel this past year. Lots of fun with Fully Loaded. We did just get in one single box undisputed, and that was really cool. Did actually enjoy Heritage. Heritage was one of my favorite WWE products from 2021. Just with those Ginter inserts and really cool foils. Much more enjoyable, in my opinion, than this past year's Heritage Baseball. We do have the White Sparkle here. Elias defeats King Corbin. Unnumbered Parallel, card number 73. RKO insert, one for Team Flair. That's RKO number eight. Hall of Fame insert, Scott Hall becomes a double champion. That is number 13. Chad Gable, White Sparkle, number 144. Another RKO inserts. We have laying out the Immortal One. It is RKO number two. We do have an autograph here, 71 of 99, Otis. Wasn't expecting it up top. Typically we're finding in the bottom right pack, but Otis here, 71 of 99, on card autograph. Wonder, are we gonna find our first ever double autograph box? Breaking the pattern here with that Otis autograph. All right, so let's get you top loaded, Mr. Otis. 
on-card autographs, which I do appreciate about this product. OT, up there. Some of them have funny denotations on the autograph, like Riddle, it says bro. This one just says OT for Otis. All right, so hit number one of the box. Couple packs here in this bottom right row. Let's see. Coolest mixed tag teams, John Cena and Trish Stratus. You know, we pulled a couple Trish. Well, no, actually just one out of Chrome. We pulled a printing plate of her out of Undisputed, but it was not autographed in 2020. So we pulled a Trish autograph, but we never pulled a John Cena auto. Not sure if he's ever signed cards before. Ah, I feel something in this pack. We have another one of those film cells. So we have Natalia versus Charlotte Flair. Well, that's neat. Do I have... Oh, I always move them out of the way. I'm so bad. I always move little spacers that I accumulate from the weekend breaks out of the way. Is there anything with like a white back that I can use? I just use the back of a Pokemon card, maybe. Do I have anything over there? No. All right. Well, let's take a look here. Yeah, that doesn't help. The Pokemon card doesn't help. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Ah, I have a label that the label printer didn't like. I can use that. Okay. There we go. Nice bright background here. Natalia versus Charlotte Flair is our second hit of the box in the NXT TakeOver. That was on May 29th, 2014. Congratulations, you now own a commemorative match film strip relic. That's cool. Natalia versus Charlotte Flair. All right, so that is what was hiding down there in the bottom right pack. Still, lets me wonder, are we going to be finding any bonus hits? Because it's always been in all the other boxes of the case. One on the left side, one on the right side. So curious to see if we'll find anything extra here for Joseph. But alrighty. Already have that Encore Otis autograph and this Natalia and Charlotte Flair relic. And commemorative film strip. Alright, so let's set that down here. Trying to brush out the air bubbles a little bit. Alright, let's go into the other half here of this box. See if we can find anything else. So far, two numbered parallels. I'm hoping to find at least one more here on the left. Like I said, I wonder if we'll find any bonus hits. Memorable entrances, Triple H is number seven. Coolest mixed tag team, Sasha Banks and Roman Reigns. Knox, foil, Tegan Knox, right? She just knocks now. Interesting. Foil. I've heard this past weekend's WrestleMania events was not uh, very popular amongst the fans. I've seen mainly negative attitudes towards it. Hopefully the next one is much better. Dexter Loomis, white foil. I remember actually after the event ended, several people joined in the YouTube chat during the live stream and were like, ugh, when exactly as predicted, which is not, not fun. You, know, you want to be, you know, actually hooked into the plots rather than just be like, oh, and now so-and-so is gonna walk out. Oh, wow, I predicted correctly. Oh. Hopefully next next main event for WWE does go a bit better. Hopefully they'll take community feedback. But, oh, okay. Jimmy Uso here. 39 of 50 orange. We haven't seen an orange. So that's cool. Nice and bright there. Card number 150. Number 250. Let's go ahead and get Jimmy Uso sleeved on up. All right, so we did find another numbered parallel. Still a quarter of the box remains. We have Diesel appears on Nitro, Hall of Fame insert number two. Robert Rude, Sparkle.
Memorable entrances, John Cena. Number five. Dun, 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 dun. I remember I used to love that song. I, I just... I was obsessed with the John Cena intro song for a good chunk of time. I don't know why. I mean, it is very catchy. But, I don't know. I don't know. Alright, just two packs left here for Joseph. Alright, one last chance for any bonus hits. Haven't seen it, but never say never. Haven't seen it here in this product, but we never know until we try. I do see a sparkle, so that should mean no bonus hit. We do have Seth Rollins attacks, not attracts. Well, you know what I mean? You, again, you never know. Seth Rollins attacks Drew McIntyre. Foil to wrap off the box. So, did have the Otis autograph, the commemorative film strip, and three numbered parallels. Let me go ahead and clean up our mat here a bit, and then we'll get into a recap. Take another look at the pulls from this box. <sighs> last box of flagship. You know, honestly, I thought last time was the last box. I didn't realize we had had another. I had readjusted the storeroom, and I was like, oh, we do have another box left. All right, so let's take a look. First hit of the box, I did find our autograph. Had Otis here, 71 of 99. Authentic 2021 Tops WWE autograph card. And then our second hit of the box did have Natalia versus Charlotte Flair from the NXT TakeOver all the way back in 2014. That is film strip and scene, Natalia and Charlotte. Then we did have Jimmy Uso, orange, 39 of 50. Light green, Street Profits defeat Shane Thorne and Brendan Vink, uh, 127 out of 199. And the Aqua, Bobby Lashley defeats Umberto Carrillo, number 200 out of 299. Let's take a look at our sparkles as well, since they are gorgeous. Did have a total of six. Seth Rollins, Robert Roode, Dexter Loomis, Knox, Chad Gable, and Elias. Had two total memorable entrances inserts. Two total RKO inserts. Two Hall of Fames. And two coolest mixed tag teams. And with that... That does do it here for this box for Joseph. So thank you so much, Joseph, for letting me open up this box of WWE for you here on the channel. I really hope you enjoyed the opening and love all of these new additions to your collection. Happy to see on-card autographs for all of our single autos throughout the entire case. Always appreciate on-card autographs. So nice to see it's in even a cheaper product here like Flagship. And I really actually do like these. The matte relics are cool. But these are, from what we've seen, a little bit less common than those. Very cool imagery here. And I'm sure this is when I was out of WWE. I finished when I was towards later middle school. I just ran out of time to keep up with it. But it looks like quite the moment here. Natalia versus Charlotte Flair. So I really hope you enjoyed all of these new additions to your collection. All of you out there watching, whether you're Joseph, a different Joseph, or not a Joseph at all, I hope you enjoyed the opening as well. So if you did, don't forget to go ahead and hit that like button. Comments for me, leave those down below. And of course, if you're not yet part of the Titan Cards family, we'd love to have you join us. Make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, before I get on out of here and into a very quick second personal break here this evening, just one little Leaf mini helmet football. Those go by very, very quickly. Do have to give a big shout out to all of our channel members. Thank you so much, you all, for going above and beyond with your support. It's Bossman, and I truly do appreciate it. Do have 13 Black Label fans. And in Bounty Hunter Breaks, Chris Rivers, Devon, Epicenter Gaming, Fails Tales, Kira Soltari, Mark Mardini, Mike Clotus, MT, Sean F., Stephen Olivo, and Stephen Bly. We also have eight Gem Mint fans. Barco Ver, Dusty Archuleta, Geriatric Geek, Michael C., Michael Bigelow, Scorecard Collectibles, Shinep Zen, and William Hastings. But thank you so much again to all of our channel members. And all members do have their names shown on screen at the end of every video. But yeah, sad to see Flagship go here. It was really fun while it lasted. So many cool cards came out of this one case that we got in. And now we just have to wait. Wait and see if we are going to be getting those other products that still remain on the schedule. Really don't know how long Tops can delay. It's, you know, if Panini is releasing Prism WWE in April, are they even allowed to release these last products at the end of March? I have no idea. Hopefully they do come out, though. Women's Division 2020 was my first experience with that product. Had a lot of fun. I think we might even have just one box left, one lonely box. 
And then Finest Chrome cards are always fun. So we'd like to see Finest again. So just have to wait and see if they do end up coming out. Hopefully they do. I feel like it's kind of a reach at this point because you know what's also at the end of March? 2021 Big League. It keeps getting pushed. At some point, when does it just get axed? I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully that's not the case with those WWE products, but I I don't have too much faith at this point, if I'm honest. But with that, that does wrap up this video here. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. Take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye!